So a nice way to use reference in ZBrush when you're sculpting is to use the floor. You'll see that the floor here is this grid and um, it's turned on pressing Shift P. It's toggled on and off and by default it has the Y axis on. I can click on these little um, XYZ text letters above here and you'll see that we turn those letters on. And as you see as we zoom in and out the floor zoom, zooms in and out with our object. Um, so because this is the case we can attach images to these axes on the floor and in, in that way we can actually use that as reference. So ZBrush takes advantage of this from the draw menu. If you go to the draw menu and you scroll down you'll see that we have the options on the floor here to uh, put images on the front and back to on, on the up and down images top and bottom or left and right. So if I go to front and back for example and I choose a map and I choose map 1 I can import an image here I choose this say OK and you can see that this floor now has uh, the front and back of this image has this image uh, of this model has this image as I turn around you'll see that that is used on both sides of the model so if I snap to this view or to this view um, in the front it's going to show that model I'll turn off perspective for the moment just to get flat on views and you can see if I go to the draw menu here that this is turned on uh, saying use one map for both sides if I had turned this off you'll see the map on this side but as we rotate around to this it will disappear and um, so should you not want it from there um, so you can go to the draw menu and from here you can scale your map you can change the angle if you need to horizontal and vertical offsets and basically position it how you see fit the one thing I would say is that I'll just reset these to zero the scale does have limits if this is the the maximum that your image uh, that uh, ZBrush will allow uh, a scale of two you can't type in a higher number here for example it's just not going to allow it so you need to be modeling roughly to that scale so unify your your model and that will bring it down to a scale that will be suitable here you can do use unify from your deformation menu so if for some reason your model is too big hitting the unify button will bring it back down to a reasonable scale basically a size of size of two which is what ZBrush likes to work with so the scale is now on but we don't have one on the side image if we did have a different image from the side that we'd like to sculpt with we'd need to go to the draw menu and rather than front and back we can choose left and right and we can choose another image here uh, I don't have any other image so I'm just going to take a sample texture here for example so now you'll see that the front and back of this if this were the front of the shimmer and this were well, this way the front and this way the side of the shimmer that would work um, one bad thing about that image that doesn't really show you is if you wanted to flip this so if this texture looked like for example this instead and you decided actually that's facing the wrong way you can just go to the draw menu and as well as scaling and, and uh, positioning you can also choose to flip this so I could do the same for the front and back flip that depending on which direction I'd like to actually sculpt in so um, the last thing really is uh, we, there are some options to control the edge opacity for when you're viewing things and the main thing is that there's three fill modes and um, well four really if you count zero being off so shift and P will turn off the floor basically toggles it on and off but if the fill mode is set to zero that effectively removes any images as well changing it to one will show your model fully transparent or fully opaque and the background image will be there lightly drawn in the background um, changing it to 2 will make your background image a lot clearer and changing it to 3 will put some level of transparency on your object and show highlight the edges now this can be modified as we said before by just tweaking these values so if you find that you're not seeing enough of your model and um, you can change that the floor is still the canvas you can click on the floor it is to, it's not an image so it's not an object so you can just pan and zoom and rotate by clicking anywhere on the image and um, but if you'd like your your image to uh, uh, actually I'm going to change this side texture the left right texture I'll change that to uh, to the shimmer as well actually um, and I'll maybe change the scale of this front one so I'll go back to the draw menu I'll go back to my front back and I'll change the scale to one so they're both the same size but maybe I'll flip the one on the left and right just so we have a clear as so you have to pretend this is a front view and this is a side view um, but you'll see that when I hover over the model now as I go to sculpt it 
as I move points up, I'm moving those points and it's pointing at both this image and this image. So this is letting me know where in the model this is. You can see here, if I go to a direct front view, you won't see the blue line because it's right going straight behind. So this allows us to sculpt and actually see exactly into a line or objects if we need to make sure that we're hitting the right point if you need his eye to be exactly there or whatever. Um, which is great. You can turn that off for any given axis. So if I turn it off for the left, right, the, the line going out to the side image will disappear. We'll only have the blue line left or vice versa. If I turn that one on and turn off the one on the front back, for example, then we'll only have the one on, on that if that's all you're looking for. If you don't need any of them, obviously just turn that off as well. So we turn off the left, right B line and that will if you're not looking for that kind of reference and you're just kind of working to something that you have here. There are some other options you can adjust. When you adjust your image, you can actually crop it. So if you brought in an image that's too big uh, or showing too much of something, you can crop it and then that will actually crop that image to whatever size that you want. So if, uh, if that's useful for you, absolutely, you can use that. Um, Cool. So hope these tips help and don't forget to subscribe if you like them. Cheers. Bye.